excited. You're so excited because my next, my next guest, she is one of the sweetest women in the world. You've seen her countless times on The Tonight Show, and she's probably been in a club right around the corner from your house. She's everywhere these days. Welcome, please, Kathy Ladman. <laughs> She went makeup kiss. Make mm. <laughs> Kathy, I loved it. How are you? <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm so tired. I have insomnia. I had two hours of sleep last night. I can't tell you how good that extra hour feels. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I had a terrible nightmare last night. I dreamt my parents came to visit me. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> my parents feel like, like poltergeists. We're back. <laughs> How are May and Leo? Oh, May and Leo. You know, I just saw them. They're getting old, but we're all getting old. That's the comfort. My dad is 71. I can't believe it. He's 71. That is amazing. Doesn't look a day over 69. <laughs> I'm telling him you said that. He's still very handsome. He really is. He is handsome. I find him attractive. He's right. See? But I've, I've always liked older men. So. Uh, no, he really is. He's still very handsome, but his eyebrows are going crazy. Okay. What is it with guys and their eyebrows? He looks like a mad scientist. <laughs> yeah, he goes to sleep, he wakes up like, ooh, Dad, ooh, uh, did you take a nap or did you invent something? Does he, have, does he have hair coming out of his ears? Oh, he has hair every place except oh, where Because usually if it doesn't come out of the ear, it comes out further on the eyebrows. <laughs> Very scary. You rarely and he get braids both. them together like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gels it. It's a whole look. Rasta <laughs> And my well, mom. Can somebody get that for me? Please. It's my mother. It's my mother. I could tell her ring. I always know her ring. <laughs> Oof. She's 68. She's getting old, too. She's, oh, God, she, she's so nervous. She gasps at everything. <gasps> What's that? <gasps> What's that? <laughs> it's air, Mom. <laughs> you inhale slowly, it won't hurt you. <laughs> she's nervous. You should see her drive a car. She's like a menace to society. Uh-oh, look out. I think we're moving. <laughs> you know, she's one of these really cautious drivers. She's too cautious. You know, when my mother's driving along a road, and there's a sign that says the road curves to the left, she signals that way. <laughs> Just to let us know she's going there. And not into the brick wall ahead of us. So then my father yells at her, get away, let me get behind the wheel. Oh God, my father drives so slowly. You know, when deer see my father's car approaching, they linger. <laughs> Once a cop stopped my father, he said, sir, you're not fast, you were going? Three miles an hour. Well, I'm sorry, officer, I guess I was a little anxious. <laughs> to do what? Simulate time-lapse photography? See, now, I sort of sympathize, because the older I get, the more like my father I drive. Is you know? it? Yeah, which is not, not the way I operate the vehicle, just that while I'm driving, I just shout out gas prices, you know? Oh, 49, 9, what are they, crazy? <laughs> It's very funny, my father, Tuna, also. My father chats out tuna prices while he's driving. <laughs> tuna, I don't know. That's a little not well. Tuna, in oil or water? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's frightening is that the way they drive, right, mm -hmm. our insurance is still higher than theirs. It's pathetic. It's, everything, like, my parents are, like, golden ages. I pay $2,000 a year for car insurance. $2,000 a year, that's ridiculous. I mean, I called up my insurance agent. I said, this is crazy. I'm a woman, I'm single, I'm 35. I have not had one moving violation in 16 years of driving. He says, well, you're single, right? I said, yeah. Well, don't you ever get depressed about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, don't you ever feel like turning the wheel up to the right and driving off the road? <laughs> yeah, checks in the mail. <laughs> well, are you, uh, are you seeing anybody? Now at all? Just completely alone again? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Naturally. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Like, sorry. No, I know. I hate it. I really hate it. I get so lonely. I, I, I got myself a pet parrot. I tried to teach it to say, pretty girl, pretty girl. But it keeps saying, I can't commit. I can't commit. <laughs> it's pathetic. I, want, I got so lonely one night, I actually burned my dinner on purpose so the fire department would have to come. <laughs> Two female firefighters showed up. I hate the ERA. I really do. <laughs> now, isn't it, isn't it so much more difficult meeting people out here in Los Angeles than it's in New York? It's impossible meeting people it's, in L.A. For it's some reason. You, you know why? Because they're all in cars. That's They're it. constantly moving. I mean, the best way to form a relationship in L.A. is to run into oncoming traffic. 
<laughs> See, in, in New York, you have a fighting chance. You know, you're on a crowded train, you're face to face. You can come up with an opening line like, hi. Since our groins have been pressed together for 10 minutes, <laughs> would you like to raise a family? <laughs> Well, at least it's safer out here. But it is not safer out here. I don't think it's safer out here. It's, no, forget it. See, because in New York, you take cabs everywhere. Like, you get into a cab, the guard drives in front of your building, he waits until you get into the building, and then you're safe. But in L.A., you have to get into your own car by yourself, drive your car, park your car, then walk alone from your car to the bushes where the killer is hiding. <laughs> I hate that. Because then I have to talk to the killer. So, uh, do you kill here often? <laughs> <laughs> but now there's gotta be something. I know there's something upbeat in your life these days. You're working better clubs, you're successful. The Tonight Show shots have been great. You're on yeah. our show. You think, well, okay, maybe they're not that great. But... <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty set, too. Isn't it nice? It's really nice. Yeah, we gotta get it back by seven. Okay. <laughs> uh... No, things are going well. I am working in pretty good clubs. Except, you know, no matter how nice a club is, they put you up in this dump. I mean, like, I think last time I was working, they put me up in this place called the Luxury Budget Inn. That's what I was saying with the Luxury Budget Inn. That's like the beautiful, horrible place. <laughs> it's the ugliest hotel I've ever been in my life. Everything in my room was orange. Everything was orange. The table, the chairs were so loud. I couldn't sleep. I I'm lying in bed, my eyes, my eyes are wide open, the walls are going orange. <laughs> Those jungle print camouflage bedspreads, you know those kind? Yeah. They're like orange, brown, and turquoise. You know, you put something on, the thing just disappears. <laughs> hey, where's my suitcase? The bedspread ate my suitcase. I had to check like 10 times before I left. Yeah, I hope I have everything. <laughs> oh, you know what I discovered? If you lie really still on one of those bedspreads, you can get a late check at. <laughs> the maid walks right by. She just throws mints on your face. <laughs> I like nice hotels. Don't you love nice hotels? It's just amazing what our lives are reduced to. We get excited over a late checkout. <laughs> oh, they said two. Really? Thanks. <laughs> oh, I like nice hotels because I love room service and I like housekeeping. I love housekeeping. I like to call up housekeeping at like four in the morning. Yeah, uh, could you send someone up to fold a new point on my toilet paper? <laughs> Why not? It's blunt again. <laughs> Will you, will you tell the American Airlines story? Oh, you know, okay. Now, I was listening to Bill. Bill gets to fly first class. I have to fly on these, like, stupid, the, the cheapest flights. This last one had this orange day glow sticker. It said everything you can't do, you can't do, you can't do. I feel like Hester Prynne from the Scarlet Letter. I had to, like, cover my eyes when the movie came on, I swear. So I get on this flight. By the way, can I just point out that very few people who watch us would have any idea who Hester Prynne was. Didn't they, didn't they have to read the Scarlet Letter in school? <laughs> See? But you didn't remember her name. Did you remember her name? You should go back and read the classic one comic the book few. now and they'll highlight that. We should, uh, I just want to point this out so that everybody appreciates one of the few comedians ever to use the phrase Hester Prynne in a comedy routine, ladies and gentlemen. So my nephew bows. Thank you. So go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so anyway, so I'm on American Airlines and it's my birthday and I'm by myself in this horrible coach seat, squished in, you know. And I wanted to celebrate, so I got a little bottle of wine. And they give you this bottle of wine with a screw-on cap, <laughs> and it has the initials of the airline on the bottle of wine, AA. <laughs> and then they give me a cup to pour it into, and that says AA. And then the stewardess gets on, and she says, hi, I'm Elaine, I'm your stewardess, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> and everybody in the cabin says, hi, Elaine. <laughs> oh, my God, I think I'm on the wrong flight. <laughs> well, I think we know it's not a Northwestern flight. <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I hope we see you again Thank soon. You, Thanks so much. We'll Make be right back with more right after this commercial message. Really important thing.